Greenland's ice sheet melting so fast it has caused global sea levels to rise 0.5 mm in just a month. Here's a summary of the article. Up to half the surface of the island's ice sheet is thought to be currently melting, with runoff equivalent to a 0.5 mm rise in global sea levels in July alone. Greenland has seen abnormally high temperatures so far this summer, scientists have told The Independent, with melting expected to rival the record levels seen in 2012. The Danish Meteorological Institute thinks that yesterday, about half of Greenland's ice surface was melting, that's twice as much as is normal for July, she told The Independent. Dr. Twila Moon, of the University of Colorado's National Snow and Ice Data Center, told The Independent that temperatures over large areas of the ice sheet reached 5 C or more above average on Wednesday. These are extreme temperatures for the ice sheet, and communities around the Greenland coast are likely bracing for flooding from ice melt, she added. Ruth Mottram, of the Danish Meteorological Institute, told CNN this week that an estimated 180 billion tons of Greenland's ice had melted into the ocean since 1 July, raising sea levels by about 0.5 mm. The current level of melting is a symptom of global climate change, said Dr. Ryan Neely of the National Center for Atmospheric Science, a research center in Leeds. While record-breaking temperatures in parts of the Northern Hemisphere were a sure sign of climate change, said Professor Jeffrey Cargill of Arizona's Planetary Science Institute, at this time we cannot say that a couple of days of hot weather in Greenland will result in a sea level change, or that a subsequent period of colder weather than normal might negate this heat wave. This post received a score of 18,886, with an upvote ratio of 94%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. Hey, so this thing we've been warned about for decades is happening now. Get ready. I'm not ready. Give me two months at least. I want to crop my granddaddy purple so I can enjoy the end to its fullest. I'd say you at least have another two weeks. Ah, I see you frequent our ah, microgrowry. Two more weeks. I'm with Dicknads. Two more weeks. Does anyone know if there are non-profit that buy land and plant trees that people can donate to? Think of what level you live on above sea level and how flash flooding occurs. But in this case, there's no place for the water to go. Uneronically, we should be less worried about that than the potential for what will happen once the Arctic and Greenland are both ice-free. Both are functionally the AC units of the world because of their massive ice sheets and because air currents to them in a conveyor belt, dumping warm air out and bringing cool air to the rest of the world. When both of these are gone, the traditional way that the climate has functioned will likely collapse in on itself like a house of cards. You won't have to worry about your beach house being underwater because the fucking growing seasons are going to be in ruins now. Western Europe in particular is going to be fucked if the Gulf Stream weakens significantly, ironically because it will become much colder. I'm not a smart person, so I don't know all the ins and outs of climate change. But it seems to me that being colder would be preferable to being warmer. You can always build large greenhouse gases, and energy is cheap if you're good at making it. France is very good at it. Not really, the energy cost used to extract a barrel of oil has risen sharply compared to how it was, it's the reason why tar sands and fracking have become popular, they offer ways that are economical in extracting the hydrocarbons we need for fuel compared to traditional oil drilling. If you've heard of peak oil before as well, well, that's the crest of the productive oil cycle before the downward trend begins. While there is contention over when this supposed to happen, the International Energy Agency has stated we've already passed that in 2011, and assessments of major oil companies have shown that they have experienced loss in raw volume of oil products dating back to at least 2006. Every energy source we use will have differing peak times. Greater than our best bet is to maintain our climate as is. I'm sorry mate, but that ship has sailed. Technology has gotten us into this mess, and it's our only way out now. This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.